Good morning and welcome to another Fast Tracks webinar. Today we are going to be go, going over the settings of the warehouse. As you can see, I'm already logged into to my warehouse software. From there, I will go to maintenance. and the settings tab. So in settings we have four different tabs. We have a general, a personalization, reports and invoice, and an other. So we'll go through each one of these tabs and explain what the settings will do. So we'll start off in, in the general tab. Under general settings this is where we put in our information for our warehouse, our address, our phone number, fax machine, website, and email address. If you're going to be using the, the journal, we have a setting here to automatically add journal entries. Before we actually do that, we would have to go into accounting and go to chart of accounts and actually create accounts. Um, with this, we'd hit add, put in our account number, and a description. For our purposes, I just created one for orders and one for purchases just so we could see the settings. So if I enable journal entries, I would then say which one is my orders and which account is for my purchases. In this way, it would then track in the accounting portion for us to so add to the journal every time we do an order or a purchase. In the middle section here, we have options to auto print purchases when applied and also auto print invoices when applied. With these two settings, whenever we save and apply an invoice or purchase, it will automatically send that to the printer to be printed out. We have an option to clear an item after a failed search. With this one, if you're entering an item number and you enter the incorrect one. With the box unchecked, that number will remain in the box. If we check it, it would blank out what we, we had originally typed in. So let's say if I was doing a new order, tells me that item was not found. But as you can see, the item stays in, in the box here. So now I'm going to go back to my setting. I'm actually going to check it and I'm going to save it. As you can see, it erased the number that I had typed in that was not found. We also have the check boxes to calculate tax on purchases and also which tax plan cost rule to use on purchases. So if you have multiple tax plans, say if you sell to different states, you can select which, which tax plan that it will be pulling from. If you do not have Calculate Tax on Purchases checked, then 
whenever you do a purchase, it would not calculate taxes on that purchase for you. Um, with it selected, we go into an order. As you can see right now, I did not have that box saved, so I do not have an option to calculate taxes. So now I'll go back into my settings. And I will save my setting here. Now I have the link to calculate taxes on this order. Once I'd actually received a quantity, I could hit calculate taxes and it would then figure out how much my taxes are on what I'm receiving in. We have a checkbox to prompt for restocking fee on returns. This is for any time one of your customers is returning an item. You can charge a restocking fee and set how much of a percentage you're charging for them to be able to return. We have an option to ignore a price list when using a price book zone. So if you're using a, a price book zone with an account, it will ignore what the default price list is for them and use whatever is in that price book zone. We have our settings here for calculate margin based on, and we can select manufacturer list cost, average cost, or last cost. And we have the calculate for taxes and invoices as well. So you may want to calculate your margin based on your average cost, but your tax would be on manufacturer list cost. So as you're doing orders, your taxes would be based off your manufacturer list cost. But when you're looking at reports, your margin is based on what your average cost is for that item. All right, down at the bottom, the group of settings here that we have is we can show a markup instead of a margin in item details. And item details is under item maintenance. And as you can see here, we have a, a margin. If I wanted to show it as a markup, I just check that and I can go back to it now. And I now have a markup instead of a margin. We have an option to automatically create a back order for a purchase order. This is in case you receive something from your vendor, but say you ordered 10 and only received five, this setting would automatically create a new purchase order for the remainder that was not received. So we have this enabled, so I'll go into a purchase. I'm just going to receive five on the bottom two, so I'm short five on this order for each of these. So now when I save and apply, so now you see that I have a new purchase order, number five, and it tells me my reference is the back order from number four.
and it is the two items that we did not receive full quantity on and our order quantity is five because we only received five of the original ten. We have an option to prompt for a fuel charge when creating an order. So if you charge a, uh, a delivery fee, fuel charge, um, whatever you want to call it, this would actually pop up a, a box every time you do an order and ask you if you want to uh, charge that fuel charge to this order. And in which case you can tell it yes or no on that. The fuel charge is actually set on the accounts themselves. So if I went into an account, I would set the fuel surcharge here for this particular account. And with that setting, again, I can tell it that I want to charge it for this order that I'm creating or not charge it for that order. Uh, we have the option here to use a price book zone. And basically what a price book zone is, is where you set a, a special price on an item and you can attach that or attach accounts to that particular zone. So I might have zone one where I have an item that's normally $25, but I'm discounting it to $20 for certain accounts. I'd put them in that price book zone and anytime that item is sold, they would then get that discount. Um, and this is just the option to, to be able to use price book zones or not. If I have it checked, I'll have a tab for prospect zones. If it's not, I well, will not see that tab. We have an option for enable remote warehouses. This is going to be to where if you have, say, like a, you load up a truck and the truck goes out for deliveries and you're selling stuff off the truck, that would be a remote warehouse. And this would give you the capability of of seeing what's on on those remote warehouses. Show custom reports. Um, I currently do not have it checked. If we look at our reports, um, as you can see, I do not have a custom reports tab up here. Enabling that setting. then gives me my custom reports tab here. We have the option to update last cost when adjustment is made. Um, so with this checkbox, if this is enabled, whenever you do an adjustment, you put in the cost of the adjustment for the item. And this setting will actually update your last cost based off that adjustment. So if your last cost was, say, $2, and you do an adjustment and say that the cost on the item is $150, your last cost will now be $150 on that item. With it unchecked, it just your last cost remains what your last cost is already set at in, in item details. We have capability enable ship tracking. We have an option to prompt when resulting is a negative quantity. Um, basically, that's if you're if you're filling an order and you put in a quantity, but that quantity exceeds what you have on hand, this will prompt you to let you know, hey, this is is going to make this item a negative amount. Are you sure you want to proceed with, with this? We have the capability to enable order verify. This is for after an order has been picked. With order verify, on, someone else can then go into that order and verify that the correct amount was picked. Um, somebody didn't accidentally hit five when it should have been four, just to make sure your order is, is accurate. 
we have the, the option to save order date. This is for when you are creating new orders. You can set a date on it. And say if you're doing orders for for the future. So this is Friday. If I wanted to create orders for Monday, I can have save order date. And when I go in to create my order, I'll set my date as Monday. Finish that order and go start a new order. It's going to remember that I had it set as a Monday. So it'll keep using that date until I actually change the date. In the middle column, we have split EDI orders by pick groups. So with, with this setting, if we're doing EDIs and we have different pick groups set up, say we have a pick group for cigars, one for cigarettes, it'll split the order based on those pick groups. So it'll take my cigarettes and put on one order, and it will put my cigarettes on another order based off those pick groups. The option here to set a sales agent as logged in user is whoever's logged in is the one who's getting credit for the sale for that order. We also have the option of having salesmen, and you can have a salesman attached to an account. However, with this setting, whoever is logged in at the time the order is entered is the person that it says gets credit for this order. Auto close when applied. This setting is when you go in and you you're doing an order, you pick an order, and then you're invoicing the order. Once you save and apply it, this will automatically close the screen out. Um, for example, if I go into inventory, I'm just going to go ahead and pick this order. I'm going to fill it. And I'm going to close the order. So as you can see, all my windows closed. I went back to the order screen. Without that setting, I'll go back and do an order. I'm going to pick it and fill. And I'm going to close this one. So we can see that it has been closed. But as you can see, my pick order screen is still up. I have to manually go in and exit the screen and also the order detail screen. Show quantity on hand as a decimal. By default, it's not checked, so your quantities are whole numbers. But if you have, say you had a return of two packs of cigarettes, if you have it show as decimal, your own hand would be, say, 10.2, showing that you had a partial amount, two packs. Um, otherwise, it just shows as a whole number on your quantity on hand. Auto send EDI when applied. Basically, if you have EDI set up, once the order is is invoiced, it'll automatically send that EDI out to, to the account. We have settings to show exports. We have a mirror ordering when copying. Um, basically, if you're copying an order, it will keep everything identical to what's on the, the order that you are copying. We have the option to enable stamp tracking. So if you have stamps and you want to keep track of your inventory on your stamps, we would enable this setting. Explode kits on entry. This is if you have a, a kit set up where you say you have an item that has a kit that has three items in it. With the explode kits on entry, when that item 
kit is actually entered into the order, it would split that up and actually show the three items that's inside the kit and not just the kit itself. Enable order back orders is a lot like the create back order purchase order. If one of your accounts orders some items and you don't have them in stock, it will create a back order for that account for whichever items you were not able to to fill at the, the current time. Enable order forwarding is an option where if your account sends a an order to you, you have a an order, you can take and forward that order, make it basically a purchase order to send to your vendor to to get that to come in. If that is enabled, we have to select which vendor that the order would end up being forwarded to. Ignore picked items during inventory. What this does is if you have orders that are, are picked but have not been invoiced, on an inventory worksheet they show as in progress. So say if I had two items picked on an order and I was doing an inventory and I counted four of those items in my warehouse, my inventory worksheet is going to show that I actually have six because it's taken in consideration that I have two picked. So if I don't want it to do that, I want to actually count everything that I have, including the orders that have been picked. I want to count those items as well. I would just ignore any picked items. And that way what I count is the, the amount that I have. Prompt to unpick zeroed items. That's an option to where if you go in and and you're picking an order, but you have zero of an item, so you put zero as your, your quantity, it will unpick it to where that item does not show that it's been picked. The prevent reopening closed invoices just means that if once an invoice is closed, you can't go back and reopen that that order for any reason. We have an option to have pending orders. Basically, this gives you a a separate tab um, to where you'd have not only orders, but you have your, your pending orders, you would basically take your pending order and convert that over into a regular order and then pick it as normal. We have an option to add um, a prefix for updated items with uh, three asterisks. Um, basically this is if your is used for if your cost changes and it is a way to notate on your on your reports with those three asterisks in front of the item description that there has been a change on this item. And that's basically for like a price list if you're giving out to your your customers they can see that this price has recently changed. We have a checkbox to allow deletion of items with history. By default, that's unchecked. That option allows you to delete an item. Say if you've had an item that you've been selling for a while and all of a sudden you're not carrying it. If for whatever reason you do not want to keep that item in your database, you can check this box to allow deletion of items with history and it will allow you to delete that item. If not, you'll get an error message that'll pop up say this item has history and cannot be deleted. Disable editing order and invoice dates. That basically makes it to where if when you go into an order, As you can see, I cannot change my invoice date. It's grayed out.
It'll basically show it's invoiced on whatever today's date is. When doing an inventory, we have an option to verify the location of that item while doing the inventory. The auto next day shipping is when we're invoicing an order. If we invoice it today, it'll automatically put tomorrow as the, the ship day on it. Um, allow zero dollar purchases means if you're if you're ordering something from your your vendor and they send you a promotion that's no no charge on it, it'll allow you to actually receive that in. If that is unchecked, if it's a zero dollar cost on that item, it'll give you a warning that that it can't receive that in. Use purchase terms discount. Some vendors will give you um, discounts depending on like when you pay your your order, and you can set this up to where it'll check to see if you have terms from that vendor. And if you do, it automatically give you that discount and show that on your uh, purchase order. Our next tab is personalization. This is just where we go in and customize the, the labels inside the warehouse program. So, for example, the first settings are categories. These can be named ever how you'd want to, to lay them out, whatever is best for your warehouse. Um, but as we can see, I've got category one is major category, then subcategory, manufacturer. If we go into item maintenance, we'll be able to see that that's how my categories are laid out here. Major category, subcategory, manufacturer. The same is true for locations. I have bay, aisle, section, those are set up under personalization as well. And again, your warehouse may go have different names for everything. So you would just fill this in whatever is best suited for, for your warehouse. We have custom uh, sections for vendors and for customers. Just basically it's five lines that you can you know, put whatever type of information you want in those lines, and you can customize that here as well. We have the checkbox here to show the tree filters and mass updates. So if we go into mass updates, it's going by categories, and currently I only have one category set up. We can look at that here, category one. I only have the one. If I was to fill this out, I'd have more tree information here. The other option is just not to have that checked. Bear with me just a moment. Sorry about that, I hit the wrong button. So, as you can see now, without, without that uh, box being checked, I now have all my different categories listed here, and not just the ones that are filled out. The next tab is Report and Invoices. So from here, we can put our invoice footer and also like a header disclaimer onto, our, um, onto all of our invoices. This would be printed out you know, every time we print out an invoice. Right here we have a fuel surcharge um, 
or the fuel cost label we have right now is fuel surcharge. This could be changed to delivery or ever what you would call um, call this, and that would then show up on your invoice as say if I named it delivery, it would show up as delivery fee. We have options for your your pick list. So if you're printing out a, a pick list to go through and and pull items, it'll do it by chronological order. We can do it by location, location of only what's in stock. Um, we can do it by pick group. Um, or if we have like just a single location, we can select that location to go to. Um, we also have an option to sort by item number or by description. Same thing for invoices. We have different formats. We have formats A through G. And again, with that one, we can sort the items on that either chronological, by item number, or by description. We have a, a spot here where you can actually put in your, your company logo. By default, it's the Fast Track logo. To change that, I can go to Change Logo. And I'm going to change it to this Fast Tracks when it has the color. So that's now my invoice logo. And if I actually save that setting, I look at an order and I tell it to print. It has my logo here. And So we also have the options to show the WEID logo on your invoice. Um, you can show delivery date. If you have uh, cigarettes, you can do a SIG count if that's needed um, for your records. Um, here's we have show header disclaimers, which this would then put any disclaimers here that I have. If I want to show the unit cost, um, on the purchase report, I would select this setting here. And we also have a, a setting to use category three as a reason code when your invoice quantity equals zero. Basically what that's doing is if I'm doing an order and I don't have the the items to actually send out to the, the store, if this is checked, it will use whatever's in Category three right here as my reason code um, for not having that. But I am going to save these settings with the the ID and everything, and let's just put let's put a header one and header two there and save. Now, when I go back to that order and I tell it to print now, here's my WeID logo. As you can see, I've got header one, header two. Anything I would have for the footer would be here on the, the right side in this, this layout. As you can see, I also have a cigarette count here. Um, I don't have my MSA information set up, so it's not showing any any packs currently, but <clears throat> normally I would have this set to show on SIG count and it would pull in my packs and, and cartons. Last tab is the other tab. So the, the first part of this one is our MSA setting. So we'd have our distributor ID that we put in and our contact information. And this is for when we're running our MSA report. This is the information that it puts in for us. The next section is UPC uh, creation. So if I'm telling 
the warehouse to just generate a UPC number for an item. I put in what prefix I want to use. It's generally a five five digit number. Um, and we use net UPC next UPC number it, it keeps track of the number so it doesn't reuse the same one over and over. This middle section here is Fast Tracks Directory Integration Settings. So if if you also have the retail software we do integrate with Director. We would just enable the setting. We'd say what our warehouse uh, vendor number is in Director. Um, We'll just say for, for this example that we're vendor one. We have uh, an option for department in director. This is basically when we create a new item in warehouse, it will send it to the retail side and we tell it what department we want to put it in. Um, the best way to do this really would be to have like a new items department to where everything goes to that and then you can then move it once it's in there. But I'll say we we put it say Department 99. Um, we have options to use the full integration. We have to use MSRP as our retail for new items, um, and also auto send changes. So the MSRP for retail, we go into an item. Whatever we have as the MSRP here would then be the the default retail price in the retail software. Of course, when sending to retail, our default price here would be their their cost on the retail side, and then like I said, the MSRP would be their their selling price. We have a setting to enable sales tax collection. This is basically for items that you are selling to say to your stores that you have and they're not going to be resold or store use items or whatever, paper towels, things of that nature. You have to collect sales tax on that. So this would then allow you to collect the sales tax as you're putting those onto your orders for for your accounts. We have an option to auto create account number settings. Um, so basically what this would do is when you're creating an account number, it will generate the account number for you automatically. So you don't have to remember you know which accounts you've used. So for example, currently Like I currently have these two accounts, but if I look at my account groups, I'll select this one. So right now it's grayed out to where I can't type anything in. But I can auto create a, with a prefix and a postfix. So let's go back to my settings. I'm going to enable this. So now if I go to add an account, it tells me to select my group. I only have the Alabama one set up, but as you can see right now, I have 00001. So it knows my next account is going to be 2. So if I save that, that automatically fills in my account number. This way I don't mistakenly use the same account number for for two accounts. I would then go in and fill in my name and, and all the other information. We've recently added um, accounting export settings for like um, accounting software like QuickBooks. You would just enable it and put in your information here. So that does it for the tabs up at the top. We do have two other settings down at the bottom. They're the hyperlinks. The first one is e-commerce settings. Um, so this is basically if you have an e-commerce site. Right now the integration types are uh, 
or these two, and basically you would select which one and fill out your information. Um, the other one is support utilities. Now with support utilities, we do not recommend going in and and really doing a lot with these. These are more for us to to come in and, and help you out. Um, but just to kind of give you an overview, it gives us the option of when we're using integration with uh, the retail software, um, we would be able to re import items from Report Group 4 from Director. It allows us to import um, items from Director by vendor, um, import from Director based on store inventory. Um, Basically, it's just a bunch of different import utilities in the top. We can create snapshots. Um, basically, you know, a snapshot is ran once a day to show you what your inventory is at a given time for that day. Usually, it's done at night. And there is a scheduled task that's ran that will generate snapshots for you. But if that's not enabled, you can go in and manually generate snapshots. Um, the system will go through and look through orders, purchases, things of that nature, and generate these for you. So we have the option here to do it basically by a range starting at a certain date, and it'll start that day and move up until today's date, and creating snapshots for you. Or if you're needing snapshots for a certain day, you select what day, tell it to create, and it'll create the snapshots for that particular day for you. Again, we have more importing. This is for if we're using a CSV file and not using Director. Um, we just have the different formats. Again, this is going to be mostly for new customers that are setting up their, their warehouse database. But we do have options to import information into the database for you. Um, so we have the option here at the bottom to remove taxes from last cost, average cost of manufacture, list cost for a certain tax group. We can clear orphaned orders. Um, that's basically an order. Um, if I go into orders here, if I started a new order and I just exit out, it tells me there's zero items, what I ought to delete it. I'm going to tell it no. So I just have this order sitting here. Well, under support utilities, that's an orphaned order. So if I do that, that will actually clear that order out. So now it is no longer in here. And it will tell us in the dashboard as well that my order 14 was deleted by a clear orphan order utility. This will go through and refresh our quantity on hand on um, purchase orders and reserved items. Um, we can refresh our sales history, reset our average cost. Um, Here's a, a section to be able to add accounting information. We can also refresh tax on on orders. Uh, also, not only taxes, but cost and average cost on purchases. Um, so, for example, refresh tax on, on orders closed after a certain date. If the tax rate changed for whatever reason, we can set our date, tell it to refresh, and it'll recalculate based off of the new tax. Um, again, if you're using like the e-commerce and you have a website, we can get images from that website, um, uh, reset the, the count balances. We have the option to set the primary vendor parts on your, your items. Um, and if you're using a Zebra printer, we do store the the format in the database. So we do have an option here to, to create Zebra formats. Um, basically, you'd have to design the 
the format from the Zebra software and then come up with the code that Zebra has and we can paste it in here and it would then save it. Um, but those are the support utilities that we have. Again, you know, this is something more for for us to help you out rather than you go in and use these because we really don't want to change, you know, taxes on a bunch of orders because that could, you know, mess with your accounting and when you're paying the state. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of what is is in here that is something we are capable of doing. Um, but that covers the settings of the warehouse. Um, I know that's a lot to take in. There's quite a few settings. Um, but this webinar, as all the other ones, will be posted up on the website for, uh, for you to be able to go in and, and review. Um, and to get to those, just go to our website. You go to the top page here. It's goftx.com, and we go to FTX Lifeline. And we'll scroll down to webinars. And we have the option to view recordings of the old ones. And it also will tell you what's coming up in the future. you're able to register for the ones coming up. Uh, so this one will, will be available shortly on the website as well. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to give us a call and we will be able to, to go over anything that you may have concerns about. Thank you and, and have a good day.